the Armenian Students Association Armenian Club at Fairlane Dickinson University in Madison, New Jersey, organized an event commemorating the 1.5 million Armenian massacred during the Armenian Genocide. The student, Brandon Zare Frigenti, who has formed an Armenian club in a university, along with FDU community, Armenians from the Armenian National Committee of New Jersey, Hamas Gayan of New Jersey, and members of New Jersey AYF Arson Chapter had attended the event. Fairlane Dickinson has a large rock centrally located on a college campus that gets painted for different occasions. And Brandon, the president of the Armenian Student Association, had reserved it to be painted for April 24. Brandon has always been passionate and proud of his Armenian heritage and learning about his roots along with educating others about the past and current events with what is going on in both Armenia and Artsakh. Ani Chaklazian, ANCA national board member, and Andranik Gasparian were also present at the event. After a historical tour, they spoke about the continuous aggression against Armenians in Armenia and Artsakh, orchestrated by Erdogan and Aliyev governments. Um, unfortunately, due to the politics of the time, Ottoman Turkey embarked on a campaign of ethnic cleansing. Uh, they did it mainly guided by an ideology of what we call pan-Turkism, which is Turkey for the Turks. So in essence, what they wanted to do was take the Ottoman Empire and purify it, cleanse it of its various minority elements. And one of the largest minority elements was the Armenians. So beginning on <clears throat> April 24, 2015, which is why we do this every April, uh, more than 100 Armenian leaders in Constantinople, which is today Istanbul, were rounded up in one of the central squares, imprisoned and summarily executed. These were the elite of the Armenians, the uh, writers, the parliamentarians, the clergymen, uh, uh, journalists, and other people of culture. So in a sense, the effort there was to behead the Armenians by taking their leadership away. And in the ensuing two years, from 1915 to 1917, the Ottoman government uh, systematically embarked on an extermination and deportation campaign. And uh, there are records to prove this. Many of those people were our grandparents and great-grandparents, and eventually made their way to Europe, America, and other regions around the globe. So people like myself, people like Brandon and others, are descendants of genocide survivors. So, <clears throat> I think what I want to do is really ask a question, a rhetorical question for all of us, which is, why do we do this? Why do we care? Why do we come out every April to commemorate the genocide? And I think there are several reasons, several levels. First is to honor the dead, to honor our ancestors, both those who perished and those who survived. So at, at one level, it's a very personal thing for Armenians as descendants of genocide survivors to honor their fallen. But that's not all. We're here also to demand justice because the crime was never punished. The crime was never atoned for. To this day, Turkey denies that a genocide ever occurred. In fact, Turkey uh, kind of cleverly flips the script and says that Armenians actually massacred Turks, that Armenians were the aggressors. So they try to create this wall of denial or this tissue paper of denial to avoid responsibility for the crime. The genocide is not just a historical issue. It's an issue that has present day relevance today because under the cover of war, under the co cover of COVID pandemic, Turkey is once again threatening what's left of Armenia. Okay. Um, that territory, Eastern Anatolia, 80% of it was wiped clean of Armenians. The remaining 20% exists today as a small Republic of Armenia, which um, was Sovietized in 1920. And when the Soviet Union fell apart in 1991, became a small independent Republic. That small Republic of Armenia <clears throat> and Armenians in surrounding territories, namely Karabakh, which Armenians call Artsakh, are today under mortal threat from Azerbaijan, who are Turkic people, 
And Azerbaijan's primary support uh, source, primary ally, is Turkey. So <clears throat> Turkey today is motivated by the same hatred, the same genocidal hatred, very similar to what we saw a century ago during the Armenian Genocide. They talk about ethnic cleansing. They talk about wiping that territory clean of Armenians. They talk about pan-Turkism. So it's, I think, a mistake to think of the Armenian Genocide as a historical issue only. It has very much present-day relevance with respect to Armenia and the threats it faces right now. Turks started to massacre Armenians about 130 years ago. And they haven't stopped to this day. Uh, it, this isn't the kind of thing where, you know, you open a history book, you read about some, you know, war that happened in 1842 or, you know, the uh, American Revolution, this, that, and it's sort of on paper and it's two-dimensional. If you walk away with nothing today, no facts, nothing, right? If you walk away with the fact that Brandon, your friend, my, my, now he's my friend, he used to be my little charge and my, my kid, um, all of us are real, we're three-dimensional, right? We're people. This is happening to us today. If you walk away with nothing else, understand that today, Turkey and Azerbaijan, brothers in arms, uh, are out to destroy the Armenian nation. They're not just out to destroy it and it's kind of like, we're the victims, so that's how we see it. Both leaders, both dictators of those countries, Aliyev and Erdogan, have both come out and said, in public, over and over again, right? We are going to finish the project of our forefathers. We are going to finish the project of our forefathers. That's like a neo-Hitler coming out today and saying we're going to finish what the Nazis started. That's what the equivalent of it is today. It's happening today, every day. Every day Azerbaijan continues to attack Artsakh with the support of Turkey, with drones, with ISIS fighters that they've hired that they give bonuses to for beheading Armenians. We're talking about modern day. This isn't some story from a hundred years ago anymore, right? But it's the exact same story that continues today. So when you see something in the paper that says Artsakh or Nagorno-Karabakh, if you see something about a conflict between Armenians and Turks, it's not a conflict. It's a one way more to annihilate the Armenian nation. And it's because of people like Brandon, people like Anto, like Lori, like Naidi, like Sadhad. It's because of them that the work, that, the, that our battle continues. That's why we're here today. Because there are our grandparents who were survivors, great grandparents for, for most of you, were survivors. They survived so that we can continue to be a nation. The stone painted with Armenian and Artsakh flags, an inscription demanding justice, will remain painted on a rock in a central part of the university for one week to show the FDU multinational community that the memory of the innocent Armenian martyrs remains alive today.